Good choice of words. For those of you who have ever wondered how we stay so slim, this is why. It takes a lot of oomph there to turn this engine over. Oh, we had one pop. She's about ready. Come on, baby. Operating. We, we don't usually see this in World War I movies, but it has an aerial camera inside, and it's, it's a general purpose is to go behind the enemy lines and take lots of pictures of troop movements. This, of course, is very accurate intelligence, and I would be uh, very much wanted to down a plane like this, but the pictures you could take back and the information you could give to use in general. All right, now what they're doing with the triplane is they're priming the cylinder. They're getting a little bit of fuel for the cylinder there. So that hopefully when they put the crap on this thing, it'll start. This is a tricky and it's not very laborious and it's very time intensive. I might add also that this World War I uh, material we're seeing here now is of course something that's been in the works for many years here at Golden Age Air Museum. Uh, your funding has helped us to build the airplane, the plastic dry plane replica, and the chocolate butt replica. This doll, however, has been also a Okay, I see coming over here, walking up towards the uh, uh, announcing stand, is our friend and colleague Mike O'Neill, who a little later, uh, or maybe a few 
Peter is going to be coming up here and uh, giving us a little more elucidation about World War I, and especially about next month when it, the wings and wheels uh, fly in here at Golden Age Air Museum. Just one month from now, we're going to have a very strong World War I theme.
got a top wing, middle wing, bottom wing. Exactly. To this day, if you can come out of the sun on your enemy, you have a distinct advantage. The hunt in the sun, that was one of Manfred von Richthofen's favorite tactics, was to get his flying circus to the point where they had the sun behind them. And of course, you can't see anything when you're in the sun. Those of you who drive around sunset know that when that sun is in the right position, you can't see anything in front of you. Now, as they come in, though, take a look at that uh, swooping left-hand motion. And what we're seeing now is a very vivid recreation of very real World War I maneuvering. This was dog fighting at its best. Oh, and by the way, the Brothers back then did not believe in parachutes. As an original or one airplane to bring it on out and be part of a very special commemoration at Air Venture. Now I will be there later this year, and I tell you, I'm going to go over and check them all out. I can't wait to see them all fly. And here's the fun part taxiing this triplane. This is the easier part because he's taxiing into the wind. One of the things that you have to be aware of with this airplane is because of the size of the fuselage and all the wings, the rudder is almost totally ineffective. One other interesting point about the triplane, the strut. It doesn't look quite as dramatic as the German triplane, but well, my God, the, uh, the uh, Sopwith Pup had a very strong uh, reputation as a very formidable air fighter. Yeah, this was an airplane we didn't want to mess around with. And in just a minute, we're going to ask for some applause for our pilots. I'll introduce them to you just in a minute as soon as the Sopwith Pup engine shuts down. There it is. Hold there. Okay, 